Senator Michael Brady, and this is another episode of Brady Works, to talk to you, our constituents, about what's going on at the State House. Uh, I'm here with my legislative aide, Jimmy Valentin, and uh, we've been working on the budget. It is currently in a conference committee right now, but we passed the Senate version of the budget, which is a $55.9 billion budget for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Some of the important highlights are we increased funding for public education. I know the city of Brockton is in serious need of more funding, and we've increased funding for public education for our schools. A couple uh, interesting things. We passed $125 million for higher education capital funding for our colleges. We passed $100 million for financial aid expansion through financial aid programs for in-state students attending state universities through Mass Grant Plus and proposals for this program to increase to 275 million, more than doubling the amount of scholarship funding for our students. We passed funding for 100 million for the Mass School Building Authority capital supports. And several years ago, we were able to build five elementary schools with the school building assistance funding. We're hoping to get the new public safety building done in Brockton. And I know the, the local city is bonding out money to build a public safety complex on Warren Avenue where our old high school was. Uh, that's going to be a new fire station, police station, and Brockton Emergency Management Station. A couple other highlights in the budget. We uh, passed $30 million for student support services to ensure students in the Commonwealth have success in the post-secondary level through wraparound supports, bringing the total program investment to $44 million. $25 million to reduce the waiting list for Income Eligible Child Care Assistance Program, which will create approximately 2,200 new slots for children. We passed investments for $25 million in early education and care programs to build capacity and ensure the ability of these programs to safely accommodate additional slots. In Mass Reconnect, we funded free community college programs for nursing students as a pilot to support high-need workforce Area, and there was a big new need for nurses out there. I'm constantly getting calls of, of uh, medical facilities that's in need of hiring more medical staff and nurses. We all pa passed some funding for Commonwealth Preschool Partnership Initiative, that's about $15 million. And then to expand Senate Champion Program that supports early education care for staff members with paying for their own personal child care and $10 million for early education. Transportation is a big issue in the Commonwealth. The MBTA, which has been a mess for many, many years, we put some funding into that, $190 million, but also to have proper oversight of the MBTA, and they're still working on that. Regional transportation, which we utilize in the city of Brockton, Brockton Area Transit, and the Gatra and some of the other towns that I represent, we put $100 million for regional transportation funding and grants which will exclusively be used to support the work of the regional transit authorities that serve the Commonwealth, more than doubling the total funding for RTAs to 194 million, including 56 million to distribute RTAs for operating assistance with special attention paid to those RTAs with historically low state operating assistance. We also funded 25 million for improvement in grant programs for transportation providers across the Commonwealth for initiatives such as electrification, infrastructure, capital investments, and new and innovative service delivery models. We also funded $15 million for fare-free pilot program grants to provide six months of free, fare-free RTA service for those less fortunate in the Commonwealth. As I mentioned, education has been a big priority. We passed the largest ever proposed annual appropriation for early education and care in Massachusetts history 1.5 billion investment in early education and care. This will be the first fiscal year in which the annual state budget includes a full year of funding for C3 grants, including a historic commitment to maintain this crucial lifeline for our early education and care sector. And as I mentioned, higher education, I know uh, my aide Jimmy is uh, going to be going to Bridgewater State College. He just was accepted. I congratulate on that. Thank you. Uh, we've been working diligently with both Massachusetts Community College and Bridgewater State University in our area. So congratulations on that. And you have some uh, meetings with the staff at Bridgewater State to plan out your curriculum? <clears throat> yes. Uh, for, for right now, my curriculum will be mostly taking part on communications and political science. 
I am working to, uh, hard with the staff in Bridgewater State University and will be beginning my uh, pretty much uh, next journey in college this fall semester. So I'm very excited for that. Very well, I wish you the best of luck and congratulations on that. Uh, Head Start has been a huge endeavor in our area, very much needed for the residents that I represent. We've passed $17.5 million for grants for Head Start programs, which will provide crucial early education and child care for low-income families in our district, and $50 million, an increase of over $5 million for fiscal year 2023 to assist early education and care for staff members with paying for their own personal child care. It helps families that are less fortunate to get uh, early education and extra education. So important for our district. And as I mentioned with the school funding, the Chapter 70 money, we increased uh, from last year, investing over $6.59 in Chapter 70 funding, again, which is so desperately needed for our community, especially in the city of Brockton, which educates a lot of less fortunate families in the Commonwealth. Other educational uh, investments include $503.8 million for special education circuit breaker, $230.3 million for charter school reimbursements, because we lose a lot of funding to charter schools in our area, $97.1 million to reimburse school districts for regional school transportation costs. That's a big endeavor, and that's representing a 90% reimbursement rate. Uh, much needed. We have more students from our area going to regional schools, and they've been great helping out in our district. Uh, helping young men and women learn trades, and there's a big need for people in the trades industry. I get calls every day, people looking for plumbers and electricians, et cetera, so greatly needed in our area. And then rural school aid supports, and some of the areas I represent down in Halifax, enhancing the more rural areas outside of the city of Brockton. And uh, a couple other things, Civics Education Trust Fund, we finally passed some legislation to te teach civics in the classroom in genocide education to help students learn about the genocides that have happened in the past. Mental health, family care and health is huge. And um, during the pandemic, a lot of families suffered. They were having virtual uh, help in classrooms and virtual um, endeavors that just weren't working. So mental health in, in the addiction crisis is still, is still a big uh, area that needs help in our community. So we passed uh, some funding, additional funding for that, uh, 19.93 billion for MassHealth, providing more than 2.3 million people with continued access to affordable, accessible, and comprehensive healthcare services. And a couple other things included in that, uh, to 2.9 billion for a range of services focused on supports for people with intellectual and development disabilities, uh, 597.7 million for Department of Mental Health Adult Support Services. Um, children with mental health, we increased funding for that. Domestic violence, which is still a big issue and still was an issue during the COVID pandemic, uh, we increased funding for that. Early intervention services, family community resources. We helped increase funding for counsel on aging for our elderly, assist for elderly to $14 from $12 in fiscal year 2023. Uh, initiatives for children, adolescents, and adults, family and adolescent health, including a comprehensive family planning services, and we've increased funding for that, behavioral health. Uh, so the budget is now sitting in the conference committee. It's, uh, there's differences, as was always mentioned, between the House of Representatives and the Senate. We're hoping to get that done before the end of the month, and uh, we've been pretty efficient on getting the budget done by the end of June, uh, 1st of July, so we're confident that'll be Accomplish Meals on Wheels, we've increased funding for that as well. Learning grants for K through 12 and child advocacy centers, just to name a few. Uh, a couple other things that we passed uh, for economic development opportunities. We funded 444.7 million for transitional assistance to families with dependent children to help them get back in the workforce. Adult basic education services to help them get in the workforce and join the workforce to get good paying jobs. Uh, food assistance has been a big thing. I get calls every day, people looking for food assistance, for funding for rental vouchers, et cetera. So even though there's a lack of apartments out there, we're looking to invest more in investment in housing and real estate. But while we're working on that, we had increased funding for uh, emergency food, food assistance, um, 
incentive programs, empowerment grant programs, and career technical institutes to help people get training for jobs. And as I mentioned with housing, in the budget, we made a historic $1.5 billion investment in housing, dedicating resources and programs to the support, the housing stability, residential assistance, and homelessness assistance. And we still have a major problem in our district with homelessness. So we're trying to get that straightened out. And the rental, rental voucher program to help families, as I mentioned, there's waiting lists to get into apartments, housing. I talked to the housing authorities, not only locally in Brockton, but other housing authorities in my district to try to get people housing because there's waiting lists that are going on much too long. So we've got to get that straightened out. A uh, couple other things that I was able to get in the budget for specific earmarks for my district. I'm always looking to get safe drinking water for our district and we get our water from the Silver Lake region and when water shortages were short, they dipped into Montponset Pond down in Halifax and other areas down there. So I'm always getting funding for testing and treatment of chronic bacteria so our drinking water is safe. I get money for the Central Plymouth Water District Commission. Um, and also remediation. I now have the towns of Avon and part of Randolph in my district, so I've got funding for remediation for PFAS for the town of Avon. And that's another issue we're dealing with with our firefighters to make sure their equipment is safe. And we're looking into getting, because some of the equipment they wear has PFAS, and that's not safe for people going to work every day. We want to make sure our employees are safe out there, saving lives. And we're looking to get some legislation passed for that as well as funding to help with that. Also, Camp Kiwani, which is down in Hanson, I was able to get some money in the budget for that. And then the Champion Plan, which I mentioned earlier, the addiction crisis is still hitting too many families out there, whether they're wealthy, whether they're poor. And uh, I was able to get 100000 in the Champion Plan for the city of Brockton. I also got funding for East Bridgewater and several other towns in the district and for Bridgewater State. So uh, we're continuing to get funding for that. A couple other things we were doing um, with tax initiatives as we passed the budget and it's going through the conference committee, we're able to get some tax assistance to residents out there. And a tax change, a, a state tax, it now is capped at $1 million. So if you leave your estate to your children, anything worth of a million dollars, they're taxed at a higher rate, and we're looking to increase that to $2 million. That was passed in both the House and the Senate this year, and we're hoping to get that moved swiftly. Even House and Brockton have been worth and valued over a million dollars. Uh, child and dependent tax credit to help families when they're going back to work. Earned income tax credit, increase the earned income tax credit from 30% to 40% of the federal credit. Senior circuit breaker tax credit doubles the maximum senior circuit breaker credit from $1,200 to $2,400. Rental deductions, that increases the cap on the rental deduction from $3,000 to $4,000. And if anybody has any questions, they can always call my office on any of these initiatives. Uh, my number is 617-722-1200. And the email is michael.brady at masenate.gov. And I'm going to get into a couple things that we visited over the weekend with the Juneteenth celebrations at Jim, but I just want to go through a few more things here. Title V tax credit triples the maximum credit available from six thousand to eighteen thousand and increases the amount claimable to four thousand per year. And apprenticeship tax credit reforms expands eligible occupants and doubles the statewide cap to five million dollars in student student loan repayment exemption. Employer student loan payments will not be treated as taxable. And this is saving the employers too, because we're always considering uh, helping the business community out as well as the people that work in these businesses. So there's been a lot of tax incentives. Brownfield expansion, we've done a lot of work with Brownfields in our community cleaning up Brownfield site. We have a place down the south side of town that is now solar panels. It's been there for years, creating energy for the city of Brockton, saving us some money, lead paint abatement. We doubled the credit to $3,000 for a full abatement and $1,000 for partial abatement. Dairy tax credit, now I have some dairy farms outside of Brockton. Unfortunately, we only have uh, one farm on Pleasant Street, Gary's Farm, and there's one other one that changed on Torrey and uh, Pearl Street, but we have dairy farms out in the outskirts of my district, so we're always looking to help them out. And uh, 
local option property tax exemption for affordable housing. So we're looking to save the taxpayers as well out there. And uh, we still have a lot of work to do. And again, I want to hear from you, the taxpayers and the constituents, if you have any ideas that you think what we should be doing at the state level. So that's all the serious business. I just want to talk to you. Uh, Jimmy was uh, grateful to be with me to attend a lot of Juneteenth events uh, yesterday. The weather was nice. Um, we went to Randolph. They had a nice event there. I represent the part of the town of Randolph. Then we came to Brockton. And I know our uh, Lieutenant Governor was in town in the city of Brockton to celebrate the Juneteenth events. And um, what did you think of it this weekend? <clears throat> I think it was an incredible event uh, celebrating the end of slavery in Texas. Um, it's, it's very heartwarming to know how when in 19, 1863 when they passed the uh, proclamation to abolish slavery, uh, slaves were still informed about how they were still free, uh, not free. Um, it wasn't until 1865 in Galveston, Texas, where uh, Union soldiers arrived and liberate the last remaining free slaves. And it was an, a joyful moment to see so many African Americans, people of color, race, different backgrounds come together and celebrate in such joyful moments. So I can't wait till next year's Juneteenth. And we had, uh, and it became a federal law signed by a president a couple of years ago. And as I mentioned, we were in the town of Randolph, we had a flag ceremony and then went to Powers Farm and there was a nice celebration there with food. And we came back to Brockton, there was a great turnout in Brockton. And uh, as I mentioned, our Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll was down. We had a few other elected officials there, great turnout. And uh, Jackie Jones and her sister Gwendolyn Knowles helped organize it with a bunch of volunteers. They deserve a lot of credit. It was a wonderful event. We had some young students performing. They did, uh, did some dance routines and uh, some great singers and, and uh, great entertainment for the day. So that was good. So we're looking forward to continuing to work on your behalf. As I mentioned, uh, my number at the office is 617-722-1200. And my email at the office is michael.brady, M-I-C-H-A-E-L dot B-R-A-D-Y at masenate.gov. And I wa wanna hear from you, the constituents, we, uh, as I mentioned, we voted on the budget, that's in the Commerce Committee, we voted on some tax initiatives to save the taxpayers, but we still have other funding to do. Um, you know, sports betting is a big thing on the table, I know they're talking about that, whether they expand it down to rain him or not. Um, we're talking about other job initiatives, the HDIP, which helps with development, we were able to pass that in the tax initiative this past week in the Senate. So important for our area, a lot of these uh, developments would not happen without help and funding from the state, whether it's tax credits, tax initiatives. I know that um, the old United Furniture Building on Center Street in Montello, that's uh, coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. We drove by there yep. yesterday. On Petronelli Way, the old uh, Petronelli's gym, where Goody and Pat Petronelli trained our world uh, middleweight champion, Marvin Hagler. And uh, that's being renovated. Uh, I know there's been other buildings downtown being renovated. We're working with mass housing and a lot of these initiatives. But I will tell you, I'm getting calls every day for residents looking for apartments, which there is a big lack of, or housing. And it's good that the housing market is so hot. Uh, as soon as you put a house on the market, even in Brockton, they're getting above and beyond the asking price yes. for the house. But you want to make sure things are affordable for working families. Uh, you know, teachers who just start out on the workforce, nurses, they're not making a lot of money. Our public safety personnel, police and firefighters, when they start out, they're not making a lot of money. And there is a limited supply of housing out there. So we still have to develop adequate housing. And we've been converting some of these properties in downtown here, which is good news, and helped to clean up the downtown. I know we had a new business that opened up um, across the street from the old Brockton Bat Bus Terminal family-owned business. We're hoping that succeeds. Uh, there's been other investments in downtown. And then we've got to expand investments. You know, our transportation funding is so important. Some of the uh, fair share amendment that passed that people at high income levels uh, pay a different level of tax if they make above and beyond a million dollars. The Some of that money goes towards education, 50%. And the other 50% goes to transportation. And as we all know, our roads are in deplorable conditions. 
uh, whether it's in the main drag, some, some of these roads are state funded roads, some are city funded, some are town private roads, but we're looking to get some of the public infrastructure done to help people have safe ways to get to and from work, to get to the schools, uh, even if they want to take a little recreation to head up to T.W. Fields Park or take a ride to the beach or whatever, we want to make sure our roads are safe and adequate and, um, and to help people get around as well. Yes, I know yes. uh, it's been difficult, especially with a lot of construction going on, there's been a lot of detours and delays <laughs> and, and it's been tough, uh, but uh, we're helping to get more accessible transportation and safe transportation for our residents. And uh, I know um, you live down the south side, Jim, now. How, how is it going in your neighborhood down there? <coughs> uh, in my neighborhood is going uh, pretty well. Uh, new construction is going on. We also have successfully, uh, thanks to the city and the state and federal government, they have successfully fixed the south end of Warren Ave. Um, as you can tell, if you ever drove by the south end of Warren Ave where the Huntington School was, it was in pretty bad shape. It's a lot of potholes, but I can tell you that now it's fixed 100% drivable and it's smooth as anything before so I'm very very happy grateful to the state federal and city for getting our roads in fixable and uh, you know uh, quite frankly incredible conditions uh, because now we have safer roads and safer streets for our kids to play in. So. And uh, as I mentioned we're still looking to invest the south side of the city of Brockton needs help um, you know, Shaw's closed several years ago. There's been other businesses that have closed down there, so we're trying to get more investment in that part of the city. And then the east side, where the old uh, Christos restaurant used to be, that was taken down. The state took it over. They were hoping to build an allied health center there for Massachusetts Community College. And again, as I mentioned, there's a big need for nurses and healthcare workers out there. It was going to be funded for, for training for healthcare workers and, and nurses and so forth, but it cut by the former administration, the former governor's administration. So we've been looking to put an RFP, a, a request for proposal, to get that back on the tax rolls, to come up with a plan, working with our local officials, our local city councils, our mayor, and our state delegation as well, um, to come up with a nice proposal. It's uh, the zoning is left up to the city. It's not my job to mm -hmm. zone. It's left up to the local city officials, the city council. But that's been an eyesore for many years. It's been vacant. I think we, uh, as I mentioned, whether it's senior housing, whatever is needed. Uh, and I want to hear from the residents on that. We had meetings a couple of years ago, but it's been sitting vacant for way, way too long. And that money will go directly to Massillon Community College. I know Massillon Community College, which is a great school. I attended there right out of high school. And that is in the process of doing major renovations to their campus, which is great. Um, and, but any new additional funding from the, from the sale of that property will go directly to Massillon Community College, which is so important. They've got some great programs at Massillon Community College. And then students can also utilize a transfer program. They use a two-year credit at Massillon to go to a four-year school like Bridgewater State University or some of the other schools in the area. We're also working with college tax credits for students in whether it be uh, Southeastern Regional, the Charter School, and working with the Brockton Public Schools so they can get college tax credits. So it gives them a little advantage for that. So we're trying to help everybody out. There's a big need for the workforce out there. You know, during the COVID pandemic, a lot of businesses suffered a lot of restaurants suffered, some aren't open half the time anymore. Uh, I worked with a lot of businesses in the Brockton area and some of the towns that I represent outside of Brockton to try to get grants or funding. Uh, thank goodness we were able to help out some of the businesses, whether it be a local restaurant, whether it be a local dry cleaning business, but still there's a lot of businesses that are having a tough time and we're trying to help them out. That's why we passed some of the tax initiatives to help them out, uh, help them to get funding for training. Job training is so important. We need an adequate uh, workforce out there and properly trained, and that's so important for our area. So we've passed a lot of initiatives in the budget this year and some tax initiatives uh, in a tax proposal that we've done, both, as I mentioned, are in conference committees. They'll be working on that. But, uh, you know, we still have more work to do. And, and I want to hear again from the residents. Again, I say my number a few times. It's 617-722-1200. 617-722-1200. Uh, 
722-1200. And my email address at the State House is michael.brady at masenate.gov. So please don't hesitate to contact me. We've brought even students into the State House for visits. Um, you know, when you go in there on a daily basis or a couple days a week, you know, you, you don't take it for granted, but you get used to it. And, and to a young student, it's a, it's a big thing. It's like City Hall in Brockton is a beautiful historic building. Same with the State House. It's a beautiful historic building. And we've had tours of students from South Middle School in Brockton. I know uh, one of the teachers, Jim Stapleton, has brought students in. And uh, we've had other students in there. I go attend Eagle Scouting events. Uh, I was in the Scouts back in the day. I was uh, meeting at the uh, Boy Scouts at the Old Porter Church on Main Street. But I only became a tenderfoot, never became an Eagle Scout. And I give these young uh, people a lot of credit that uh, they attain the attainment of Eagle Scouts. So uh, I thank you for your time today. Again, my number at the Sados is 617. 722-1200. My email is michael.brady at masenate.gov. My name is Mike Brady. I am your state senator, and thank you for watching and listening today.